Yes, sir. I was um that they with that situation actually they had some kind of undercover sting going on. And okay, and what and what about the implants and things in your gums and your teeth? Yes, sir. They, they, they were facts. It was it was supposed to be for my protection. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Well, uh, they had this undercover operation going on, and um, it did was supposed you, to be. Did you agree to work in this undercover operation? No, I did not. Yes, you heard that right. And Mr. O'Shea, I think, was as confused as all of us. We are about to watch a revocation hearing for a man who wouldn't follow any of the rules assigned to him after he had just gotten released from a long prison stint for doing the worst to a child. Do you think that he's making it up or that it's real? Let's jump in and find out. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Uh, good morning, Mr. Martin. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. Uh, you said you want to make a statement. You pled guilty to the charge uh, violating number th condition number three. What is your statement? I pleaded not guilty. My statement was uh, number three. I would leave this address. I, I didn't have nowhere else to live. And I had just came home. I had been home like not even a good month. So I didn't have nowhere else to stay. I was living there. And let me see. Okay. You said you were living at the address, right? Yes, sir. I didn't have nowhere else to stay. And why why didn't you answer the door when your pro officer came to the door? If if she if she did, I might have been in the shower. I was out with my brother or something like that, job hunt the, uh, the early morning, but it wasn't like I have seen her there. She was, she did come see me there at that house. Okay. Okay. Who were you living with? Who were you living with at that house? My aunt Maggie Holmes. Then why would your aunt say that you were not living at the home for multiple nights? I don't think she would say that. It was documented at your preliminary hearing that your aunt told the parole officer that she had not stayed at that home on multiple occasions. Why were you living beside that? That's, that's the only place I had to stay. I didn't have nowhere to stay. And when, and when, and when they did come, they sent a whole bunch of parole officers. They had they sound oh, like sir, 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 sir. Then why would your aunt say that you were not staying there? I have no idea. Okay. She didn't say that to me. Okay. Condition number six. Okay. You failed to provide proof of employment. The, I was on SSI, Social Security, and I just got home. I, I, I wasn't even at home, not even a good month. I was just released. Okay. Were you looking for employment? Yes, I was. I actually went out for a couple days with my brother, and I was actually able to pay her. The first, the first month or the second month, the first month, I was actually able to pay her. Hey, pay her? Who's her? Uh, Miss, because they don't get they gave me so many parole officers, but uh, one of the ladies' name was you were able to pay your parole fees, yes, sir. Because I, I did some work with my brother, I left early that morning on different um, different on different occasions, at least two to three times, and um, I made a couple of dollars, so I was able to pay her, and that was it. But other than that, I'm, I'm on so SSI. Why would you not give your parole officer? information that you were looking for a job and document where you were looking i i'm i was um i'm it's uh it's, it's difficult to explain but i'm on i'm disability i'm on disability sir okay okay uh, condition number eight you said not guilty what's your statement um uh, i was such, such also submit a drug the guilt uh eight Oh, she didn't ever ask me for no uh, stream. She never asked me for one. And then why didn't you complete your sex offender classes? I didn't have the money. I went. You know, I went to the class and they told me, I went to the classes 
No, I went to the place to do the little paperwork. They gave her a letter. They said I had to have the money up front. And they said, whenever I get the money, come back. And like I said, I wasn't even out there good money. So I had to get the money. I didn't have the money, but I did go and they gave her a letter. And how soon after you were released did you report to the sheriff's office and register as a sex offender? Uh, maybe maybe a few days or something like that. Not not long. It wasn't long. Okay. But you had enough money to pay your registration as a sex offender, right? Not, not, I didn't complete it, but people donated the money. People, yeah, pe people helped donate money. Okay, you didn't, you didn't complete your registration? Not, not, not on time. They gave me time to pay the $60. I actually, I paid it, but I didn't pay it on time when, like, it's hard to explain, but it was paid. So people was helping donate me. I mean, they was helping donate money for me. It's hard out there. Like I said, stand out, out there, not even a good month. Well, Mr. Martin, as a sex offender, when you were when you were released, you knew that you had some obligations and rules and regulations to follow as a person that was on probation or, or supervision. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And they was paid. I paid them. I got them paid. Okay. Sir? I, I received a letter. And I read the letter. So Tell me about the letter that you sent to the uh, parole board with allegations that the law enforcement the DOC was tracking your uh, activities. Yes, sir. I was um that they with that situation actually they had some kind of undercover sting going on. And okay, and what and what about the implants and things in your gums and your teeth? Yes, sir. They, they, they were facts. It was it was supposed to be for my protection. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Well, uh, they had this undercover operation going on, and um, it was supposed are? to be. Did you agree to work in this undercover operation? No, I did not. And how did it end up? Um, it ended up the word they was informing me with certain things, but uh, they still uh, convicted me, and I, I think it's still an ongoing process. I'm not sure about it, but... Um, I'm still I'm still waiting on the answer myself, but I did get I did get jumped on and beat up and stuff like that pretty bad in and out of prison. So that was one of the reasons why I believe they put that that implant in my gums. Okay, have you ever been diagnosed with any mental health disorders? For is uh, post traumatic stress disorder and demonic um demonic depression. And what what type of medication are you taking? None right now. When did you get off your medication? Um, when I left uh, prison, when they released me, which was somewhere in July, June or something like that, June or July. So what you're trying to tell me, while incarcerated, you were taking medication that was uh, prescribed for you because of your mental health disorder. And once you were released, you stopped taking medication? No, I had to get everything together. I had to sign back up for Medicaid, different things like that. I had to sign up for Medicaid. I had to um, sign back up for my SSI. So it was, you know, difficult. Like I said, with that short time period. So well, like I, I, it is my understanding it is a policy of DOC. If your medication, when released, you give it at least 30 days of that medication. When yes, you, sir. Were you given a medication? Yeah, I did, I, had, I came home with some medication. Did you take it? Yes, sir. Did you just tell me you stopped taking your medication? Mm, so it's when I ran out. <laughs> yeah, when I ran out. Ma'am? After the 30 days, you didn't have any, any more medication, so you didn't take it anymore. Yes, ma'am. I did. Yeah, I did. You, yeah, you I, got out June the seventh. 
Yes, ma'am. So when I ran out, and I, had, I, I couldn't take it no more when I ran out. Yeah, on July 7th. Yeah. So, I tell you, Ms. Why? So, we still had the contention that you never visited your parole officer and you were never home when she made home checks. No, that's false. Actually, we, she, I talked to her and she came by. I actually talked to her. She came by. And I used to go to visit her at the office. I went to the office and I went to this place where they meet up at and like going towards Texas. So yeah, we have seen each other. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Martin, is there anything you'd like to say before we turn it over to your lawyer? Okay, one more thing. I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, Wise has I a question. Have, I have one question. Were you ever able to get your SSI restarted? No, ma'am, I was still waiting on the process. You had went to the Social Security office and did your part? Yes, ma'am. And when they released you from prison with that 30 days of medication, they also gave you an appointment to go see somebody, didn't they? Yes, ma'am. Did you go? Yes, ma'am. And they didn't continue your medication? Where, uh, where was your mental health appointment? Where was it? I had a mental health appointment at uh, the Social Security Administration office, and she gave me one to go to this this uh, this psychological class, but the lady wouldn't accept me because yeah, she now, said- Unless your parole officer did that for your sex offender stuff. Okay. I'm, I'm, let's go back to June 7th when you got released from the prison. They gave you some medication, and they gave you some paperwork. Did they That's tell right. you who you were supposed to go see next for your mental health appointment? You don't remember? No, so you didn't go to see anybody? Besides the uh, Social Security Administration. Okay, that's all you win. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. That's all I have. Thank you for answering my questions. That's all I had, Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Uh, Mr. Uh, Martin, is there anything you'd like to say before we turn it over to Mr. Miller? Yes, sir. I didn't get all my full credit. I was actually arrested in May the 2nd, May the 1st um, in um, 2017, and I didn't get that credit for that. And they gave me credit for time served. But I didn't get credit for that. Okay. And I do, I, yeah, I, I do forget easily, just like they do through head injuries. I suffered some um, severe head trauma. I got permanent brain damage. Yes, sir. So it's, it's difficult. But for as me being um, cooperative, I'm very cooperative. Very. Are you back on your medication now? Uh, not since I've been here, but they're going to start me back on it. I talked to somebody. Mr. Miller, are you still on mute, Mr. Miller? Hello now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Martin, you said you had SSI at the uh, probable cause hearing with Agent Masters. Were you able to provide her with information pertaining to your SSI disability? Actually, I brought her some paperwork, and she didn't um, get no. She didn't um, take any copies, but I brought her paperwork. Okay. I seen her. Yeah. All right. And you also mentioned today that you work for your brother. Is that the uh, haircut on the side job you were doing? Um, no, my brother. He worked in the oil field, but that that, that uh, side job. Yeah, that's something I do on my own with the haircut thing. Okay. And. You said you had listed, or they verified your address in uh, on uh, Camellia Street in Vivian. That's your aunt's. Is that correct? Yes, sir. What's this address in Rodessa that you listed down to uh, Agent Masters? That's the one that I was supposed to be um, living at, but she wouldn't let me live there. So she told me I had to stay at the one that we're, um, with my aunt. She said I had to stay there. All right. And so you were released, uh, what was it, June 7th or 13th? The 13th. Some, somewhere like they like the 7th, 13th. I think it was like 13th. Yeah, it wasn't the 7th, like the 13th. And then you reported as ordered to Officer uh, Masters. Is that correct? I, I certainly did. Were there any other agents, parole officers that you... Uh, Roll and Tug, War Roll and Tuggle, they was there. They was prison. Okay. And the only time that I guess it was uh, Agent 
masters came to your house and said your aunt said you weren't there and i see you had to lie because i actually talked to her while my hold on there. that would have been i think agent masters said it was around uh between sunday and wednesday at the end of july wednesday being july 26 i believe you were picked up uh what on july 28th or 7th so were you working with your brother uh at that time no i got picked i got i went to go see her she told i called her and i actually i was but i called her and i was picked up august uh no june august the 4th and i went to go see her and somebody had called her on the phone and they had arrested me. But she was like, you know, once I brought the check to and everything like that, and this one they arrested me. But uh, I went to go see her. All right. So you're out approximately three to four weeks since you've been incarcerated for 90 days. Have you been given any notice from Caddo Parish or any other uh, uh, law agency that you were in violation of any crimes or registration as a sex offender or anything like that? No, sir, not at all. No, no the only other legal proceeding you have right now is this uh, parole revocation hearing? That's it, and I wanted to read some, uh, read some things to you. Well, hold on, okay. Is there any other things you want to add to these allegations raised in the Bill of Particulars that you uh, might have forgotten to add? Yeah, of course, uh, being, being afraid, and you know what I said, being afraid for my life and everything like that, and suffering cruel and unusual punishment, and the Eighth Amendment, these laws are protected through the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. And they was my, they was violated. And by them coming to that house like that, and it could have been the way I could have been in the shower, anything like that. But other than that, they 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 really were scaring me, basically. All right. Uh, all right. That's all right. All right. All right, sir. I have no further questions, board members. All right. Family ready to vote? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion at this time. And the motion is that we continue this hearing until Mr. Martin gets a full mental health evaluation. After that evaluation, he should be put on the appropriate medication. And when stable, this hearing needs to be rescheduled. I concur. Okay. All right. Uh, there's been a motion to uh, continue this matter to uh, for a uh, have Mr. Uh, Martin have a full mental health evaluation, and after that evaluation, be placed on the appropriate medication, and then returned here for a hearing. Uh, there, and I concur with that. So that's our vote today. We're going to continue this matter, uh, Mr. Uh, Martin, uh, to order a full mental health evaluation. And after that evaluation to determine whether or not you need appropriate medication. And once that medication is administered, we'll return uh, to this hearing. Good. Can I say one more thing? Sure. Because they will they they will take advantage of me if I don't have nobody to you know to represent for me and stuff like that. They will take advantage of me with dealing with my mental condition. I'm sorry, what was the last part? I said they will try to take advantage of me with my uh, mental condition like they're like over taught me like real fast. They take me fast. They try to take me fast. Understand. We're going to order that they do a mental health evaluation on you and make those determinations. Yes, sir. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Have a blessing. Sir, now when you got out of jail before, you were fine, weren't you? Did they do a good job with you? When you got uh, out of, on June 13th or 17th or whatever. What the mental health had really helped you? What you doing good? Yes, ma'am, I was. Yeah, I was okay, so we're hoping the same thing this time. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, they 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 yeah, they're gonna do good just like they did before. All right. Right. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll close out at uh Bozier Medium. Okay, thank you. Well, and there you have it. And we're going to fast forward to April 2024 to see the second hearing. I wonder if he knew that he would have to wait that long, all the way from October, six months before having a hearing, if he would have done this. Do you think that it was fabricated or do you think that it's real? I actually, I don't know. 
I really don't. I don't know if anyone really could know, but from what I heard, it's. I mean, if if, if he was if if it was all if it was all made up just in an attempt to not get revoked, man, I'll give him I'll give him a lot of bonus points for creativity. But if it's real, then of course the board is doing what they have to do. Um, you know, we have come across this whole idea of the of the medication thing being a big problem. The last case we covered, they only gave the person two weeks of medication when he got out, if you remember that hearing. And then he came back saying that he was crawling around his home, barking like a dog. Um, and he was saying that, hey, don't revoke me because it was all my medication. But we had saw Mr. O'Shea say before that hearing, don't use it as an excuse. You have to find a way to, to, to get it. Um, so it's, it's a complex discussion. But let's let's jump into the next hearing and maybe we'll have some more information to talk about that. And if you haven't seen that hearing that I'm referring to, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Mr. Martin, you appeared before um, a parole committee back in October of last year. You remember that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma that time, uh, uh, yeah. That hearing was continued because we wanted to send you to uh, hunt there for a mental health evaluation. So at the time of that hearing, you were read the conditions that you have alleged to have violated. I'm going to go yeah. over that again. At the time, you, you entered a plea of not guilty. But for the record today, I'm going to ask you again for your plea. And if you, if you still maintain not guilty, that's good. I just need you to state it on the record. So I'm going to read the allegations and ask you to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty, and then we're going to talk about it, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. So it's you're alleged to uh, have violated the conditions of your parole, specifically number condition number three, and it states you have not stayed at your reported registered address as instructed. You have stayed away from your registered address on various occasions without permission or notification. How do you plead to that violation? That guilty with a state. Okay. And then there's condition number six. You failed to provide any proof of employment to your parole officer. How do you play? That guilty with a state. Then there's condition number eight. You were referred to Psychology Associates of Northwest Louisiana on June 12, 2023 for treatment. You failed to attend and successfully complete sex offender treatment as directed. How do you plead to that violation? Not guilty with a state. And then condition number nine, you made it impossible to visit at your reported registered address as you did not stay there consistently as directed. On multiple right. occasions, the residents of your reported registered address, which was 418 Camellia in Vivian, they stated you hadn't stayed there for multiple days at a time. How do you plead to violating condition mm -hmm. number nine? Thank you. Okay, so um, we're in, in just a moment. We want to go into executive session and speak to your attorney, but we have a couple of questions. You wanted to make a statement uh, before we do an executive session. Did you want you, everything you said was not guilty with a statement? Go ahead and make your statement. Yes, ma'am. Could you go back over the first one? Number three, which says you stayed, you didn't stay where you were supposed to. On various occasions, you you didn't stay there without permission or notification to your parole officer. That couple of nights I was with a friend girl, a little friend girl of mine, and it, that happened to be like that at one time. Okay. Before it's like on multiple occasions, no. So okay, so you're saying on one occasion you stayed with the girlfriend, but it didn't happen yeah. on. Okay, the next one was you didn't provide proof of employment. That's uh, I'm on. Um, I was on disability SSI. Okay. How much? Uh, how much SSI did you receive a month? They started me out with like four hundred and eighty something. They take like twenty dollars out of it, so probably like five hundred dollars. Okay. And then um, the the next one was you were referred for the sex offender treatment. Says you didn't go. I went, but uh, she gave me a letter. And I stayed out there like about, about a month, not even no two months, but about a month. So I didn't get to go into it, but I did go. 
Okay. And then uh, the next one was number nine, which says the same thing as the first one. On multiple occasions, the, the residents on Camellia, Ave, Camellia in Vivian said you hadn't stayed there for multiple days at a time. That's not true. We're not guilty. So that's the same as the first one where you stayed with the girlfriend, but once. Yeah, one night. Yeah, one night. Okay. So um, we referred you for a mental health evaluation, and we have that evaluation. So I'm going to make a motion for executive session so that we can discuss that confidential information. And uh, Mr. Miller, I think we're going to try to reach you on the phone to include okay. you in the conversation. So can I get a second? I second it. And could you do the roll call? Cheryl and Austin? Yes. 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 So stand by. We'll be back with you in just a moment, Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin. Uh -huh. Okay, we are back in regular session, uh, Mr. Martin. And Tell us what your plan would be if you were not revoked today. Where, where would you go? I would go back to my aunt's house. Well, I'm registered in it. And so on Camellia and Vivian? Yes, ma'am. Were you also staying with an uncle? No, ma'am. So you just stayed with, uh, with your aunt? Yes, ma'am. Except for that one time? Yes, ma'am. And we do show, I'll say this, we do show in the record where you were not able to afford the sex offender treatment for the uh, psychology associates where you were referred. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. So it, it was hard to, to uh, come up with whatever payment was required. But you did show up. You did show up. Okay. Um, We've talked among ourselves in executive session, and we believe that there's a need for you to have that sex offender treatment and realizing that you can't afford it. Would you uh, be willing to participate in that class there at home? Um, it ain't the idea that I didn't have the, when she wanted me to participate, she said she couldn't start with the class until I had the money. That's what right. they were. Yeah. I understand. So, so what I'm saying is because you can't afford it, what do you think about taking the class while you're there? I don't, yeah, I done took the class before he hunts. Not he hunts, but I done took the class before. Okay. I really, yeah, I really do it in free work. I understand. So we have a lady that's joined us. Her name is Miss Pat Williams, and she's with the uh, 318 program, I believe, in the Cater Parish area. Good morning. Good, uh, I guess it's still good morning, morning. ma'am. <laughs> Would you tell us a little bit about the 318 program in terms of uh, acceptable accommodations for someone in Mr. Martin's situation? Uh, yes, ma'am. Again, my name is Pat Williams. I'm with the 318 reentry program. We are funded through the Department of Corrections as a community incentive grant. So the program is six months long, and for men and women who have sex offense charges, we do have two beds currently available. Um, our program will pay for sex offender registration fees. However, we will only pay it once should he choose to move. Those postcard fees will be on, you know, will be his responsibility. This is an employment-based program. Based on what I've heard from his violations of number three, six, eight, and nine, I don't know that he would be willing to participate in our program because it is followed by parole. Our sex offenders have their own parole officer through Caddo Parish. Uh, that would be Ms. Ann Winterton, who follows all of them. We require them to stay at the address. I feel like if the program is paying rent for any of our participants, then I want them staying there versus just paying for their clothes to hang in a closet. They would need to work. I understand that he's getting around $480 for disability. Um, that, that amount of money won't even begin to cover rent in our area. Um, I can get him employment with Goodwill Transitional to help supplement that so that when the program pulls out that he can pay his rent. 
We do partner with Easter Seals, who provides case management services to make sure he's on SNAP benefits, Medicaid, mental health treatment. The sex offender treatment, I know that they're mandated to do that once they're released. I can pay the first assessment but Medicaid does not cover that. So he would be responsible for those counseling fees after that first assessment. Again, my concern is that he would actually do the program based on the violations and his lack of accountability. Thank you very much for uh, enlightening us on your program. We appreciate the information. Uh, yes, I think, and I think uh, we're in agreement with, with your assessment. Uh, based on the violations. So um, I think I'm prepared to vote. You know, ready? Go ahead, sir. Mr. Martin, you had a question? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I can pay for it. There's no problem. I really do it in society, but I've been down uh, longer than uh, what was uh, meant for me to do on the Act 280. So it wouldn't be no problem doing the classes at the time. She said I had to have it up front. And then when it, when it came down for me to go again, I ended up coming back with a violation. I understand, I understand, but I, I want to be sure you get it, and I want it to be a burden on you financially, because you, even though you got to pay for the class, you still got to pay to live. So let me tell you, Mr. Martin, I'm going to try to help you out, and my vote's going to be, I have to revoke your parole in order to get you into the place at Hunt where you can take, take the class, the sex offender treatment class. So, and as soon as you finish taking that, you can reapply for another hearing. So my vote today, Mr. Martin, is gonna to be to revoke your parole to give you the opportunity to take the sex offender class that's provided free of charge by the Department of Corrections. Okay, we're, gonna, yes. I, we're gonna finish voting first, Mr. Oh, Crater. I concur with what y'all uh, oh, see. Mr. Tillis. I concur. All right, now that's the vote. What do you wanna to say to us, Mr. Martin? Yes, ma'am. I could I could revoke myself. Is uh how many how 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 much time do I do on uh, on a year on the Act Two Eighty? Well, I don't know. I I I don't do time calculations, and the folks there at Hunter are in the best position to answer that question for you. So they can they can give you all that information. Good luck to you, sir. We wish you well. Oh, we're going to sign off, Warden. Thanks for accommodating us today. It's eleven forty-five. Thanks, Doctor Fleming. Have a good day. You know who I was impressed with? I was impressed with Lynn Stevens. She, you know, it seems that she is a program that actually holds people accountable and that she holds them accountable too. Um, now, maybe it's because she gets a good chunk of her profits from the inmates so they don't mess around, right? It's like, hey, if, you know, we'll set them up with everything that they can, but if we're not getting paid from his percentage, they just won't house someone. But uh, and she didn't want to mess with it. This was this was interesting to see this. Um, you know, they they ultimately weren't going to let him out without doing the treatment. And he at the end was just like, screw this! Like I I just want to revoke myself. How much more time do I have? Which is showing he still he just doesn't want to do the treatment. Right. That's what it seems like. Like he would rather do more time than have to go through those programs. And he just wants to revoke himself and not even have any conditions. That's how it ended. That's what he meant by that. Can I can I just revoke myself? Um, I, you know, I'll never know. We'll never know. Right. It's not fair to accuse someone of. But when it comes to um, offenders of these type of crimes, we have seen every type of, you know, every type of game played so nothing would surprise me and that's why i just have to keep to keep all options open that if he's if he's faking it or not this wasn't the first time that he didn't register and that's what this arrest record is for you know it shows that he committed the uh the initial the initial crime in let's see what it is here in 2005 carnal knowledge of juvenile we don't have any more information he served six years he was released in 2011. and if you get six years in louisiana for carnal knowledge you gotta assume it's pretty pretty bad right then he he gets out and
you know, it does, it, it, sometimes these dates just don't make sense because it, it, it shows here that he has a uh, failure to register in 2010. So it could be just that the records are a little confused that maybe he didn't even serve his full set, serve as long as six years, but he ended up getting convicted of failure to register. And then, and then he released, it was 2011. So he probably got less time, got sent back to prison for failure to register, then got released in 2011. And now he has, again, he then served much more time because he'd only gotten out just a month before even having this hearing. It's, it's, you know, it's Richard found what was, what was out there. Um, and it is, and there's just not a lot of information. So I'll just have to ask you, what do you think? Um, do you think that it was a charade, a game, or do you think that he actually believed he had weapons hidden, hidden in his, in his gums? Um, with that, I'll let you go.